Good day everyone, today we're going to be discussing about the different types of quantitative research designs. To give you an overview, quantitative research is divided into two major types. The first one is experimental research, which is subdivided according to true experimental and quasi-experimental, while the other one is descriptive non-experimental, which is further classified according to purpose under which we have survey research and correlational research, while the other one is according to time dimension. Some examples are cross-sectional research and longitudinal research. At this point, we shall now be discussing the different types of experimental research designs, starting with the true experimental research. The true experimental research aims to determine causal relationships among variables, also, it relies on statistical analysis to approve or disprove a hypothesis. It is also worth noting that the true experimental research is considered as the most accurate type of experimental design. Furthermore, it may be conducted with or without a pretest, and it always involves a control group and a test group. Other characteristics of the true experimental research include variable manipulation and random selection of participants. Furthermore, it is worth noting that true experimental research is always conducted in the controlled setting and that intervention is always present. Let's consider this example here. A researcher wants to determine the effect of classical music on academic performance of students. As mentioned earlier, since this is a true experimental research, it must have at least two groups. One would be the control group, while the other one would be the test or experimental group. In the control group, everything is held constant or regular, which means that there would be no intervention, which means that there are no music or there is no music played in their classes. While in the test or experimental group, there is the presence of intervention, which is the classical music. This intervention can further be manipulated through variable manipulation such as frequency and music volume. At the end of the study, the researcher then gives an assessment between the control group without music and the test or experimental group with music by looking at their academic performance. Based on this example, we can have the conclusion that playing classical music while studying has a positive effect on the student's academic performance. Another experimental research design is quasi-experimental research. Similar to true experimental research, quasi-experimental research aims to determine causal relationships among variables. It bears resemblance to true experimental research but different because in quasi-experimental research, participants are not randomly assigned and it involves the conduct of pretest and post-test. Furthermore, other characteristics of the quasi-experimental research involve variable manipulation. It's also conducted in a controlled setting and that intervention is also present. Let's look at this example here in which a teacher wants to test reading intervention program as aid for students with low-level comprehension. Since this is a quasi-experimental research, this study would usually start with a pretest. In this example, the pretest would be a reading comprehension test that would help determine who among the students have passed and who among the students have failed. Recognizing the students who have failed is important as these students will be considered as participants for the reading intervention program. From there, we proceed with intervention, which is the reading intervention program for this particular example. Once the participants have been identified, they shall undergo the reading intervention program, which can further be manipulated through duration of the program, the schedules given to the students, the reading activities given, and the teaching strategy that is used. After undergoing intervention, we now proceed with the post-test, which is another reading comprehension test. The students who once failed the reading comprehension test given before, who have undergone the reading intervention program, 
will then be given another reading comprehension test to determine whether they are going to pass or still fail. If they have passed, we can have the conclusion that the reading intervention program is effective in improving the reading comprehension of students with low level comprehension. At this point, before we proceed with discussing other quantitative research designs, let us have first a recap of the similarities and differences between true experimental research and quasi-experimental research. The true experimental research design and quasi-experimental research design are similar because both determine causal relationships. They also have intervention and involves manipulation of variables. They're also the same because both are conducted in a controlled setting. In terms of differences, in true experimental research, there is the random selection of participants. Whereas in quasi-experimental research, the participants are not randomly selected. Also, true experimental research may be conducted with or without a pretest, while quasi-experimental research involves pretest and post-test. And finally, true experimental research involves a test group and a control group, while quasi-experimental research does not have any control group. Now let's discuss the types of non-experimental research designs according to purpose, starting with survey research. Survey research is done to gather evidence on people's knowledge, opinions, attitudes, and values on various issues and concerns. The survey research makes use of questionnaires, interviews, and surveys. Also, in a survey research, the variables are not controlled or manipulated, and no intervention is applied. Say for example, a researcher wants to conduct a survey on the preference of individuals towards mass testing. What she does is to identify the participants and give them the questionnaires that they will answer. Again, in survey research, there is no intervention because the researcher would only wait for the respondents to give out their answers. Also, in survey research, the responsibilities of a researcher focus on recording and tallying the responses analyzing and interpreting the tally data, and from these particular data, come up with conclusions. Based on this example, the data that the researcher was able to identify is that those who answered yes is 75%, while those who answered no is 25%. From this particular data, the researcher then comes up with the conclusion that majority or 75% is in favor Therefore, Group A is in favor of mass testing. The next type of non-experimental research design according to purpose is the correlational research. The correlational research seeks to interpret the degree of relationship between two or more variables using statistical data. Also, similar to the survey research, in correlational research, variables are not controlled or manipulated and no intervention is applied. It is also worth noting that while correlational research aims to interpret the degree of relationship between variables, it does not aim to determine cause and effect relationships. Let's consider this example wherein a researcher wants to determine the influence of online gaming to the critical thinking of students. In her study, she hypothesizes that there is no significant relationship between online gaming and critical thinking. In order to conduct this particular research, the researcher needs to find online gamers which will agree to become participants in her study. Again, in a correlational research, there is no intervention because the responsibilities of a researcher focus primarily on gathering the needed data, applying the correct statistical treatment, analyzing and interpreting the treated data, and from there, rejecting or accepting the hypothesis. Now, going back to our online gamers here, these participants are then given instruments that would assess their online gaming habits as well as their critical thinking level. From there, the appropriate statistical treatment will be given in order to determine whether there's a relationship between online gaming and critical thinking. 
whether an increase in online gaming would result to an increase in critical thinking or vice versa. At this point, we now focus on discussing the different types of non-experimental research designs according to time. Starting off with the cross-sectional research. A cross-sectional research involves gathering data at a single point in time. It focuses on the same set of variables, after which comparisons are made across variables of interest. Let's take this for example. A researcher wants to identify the spending trends between men and women in their 30s. From this particular research, the findings conclude that women tend to spend more money than men. In a cross-sectional research, the researcher then takes this particular data and compares it with other variables. Specifically, in this particular research, the variables are the age bracket. From there, he will then compare whether there are similarities or differences in terms of the trends and results. Another type of a non-experimental research design according to time dimension is a longitudinal research. In a longitudinal research, the data is collected at multiple points in time. A researcher collects data from the present and again in the future for the purpose of comparing data sets. Let's take this for example. A study on the effect of the use of antiretroviral medicines as maintenance drug for HIV-positive patients. The participants for this particular study are individuals who tested positive for HIV. At the start of the longitudinal research, their HIV viral load is taken and recorded before they are given the medicines, after which their viral load is monitored on a specific schedule in order to determine how the medicines are working. Based on this particular example, you could say that it takes quite a long time before this particular study is finished. Hence, we have the term longitudinal. Now, at this point, we are now going to discuss the similarities and differences between the cross-sectional research and the longitudinal research. In terms of similarities, both are observational in nature. Both the cross-sectional and longitudinal research compare data. However, in the cross-sectional research, it compares the same set of variables with other variables of interest, while in longitudinal research, it compares the same variable and same subjects. To continue, both cross-sectional and longitudinal research have no intervention and no variable manipulation. In terms of the differences, in cross-sectional research, the data is collected at a single period in time while in longitudinal research, the data is collected at multiple times. And also, in cross-sectional research, it takes a relatively short amount of time to finish, whereas in longitudinal research, it may take a long time before completion. And lastly, we now proceed with discussing the similarities and differences between the experimental research designs and non-experimental research designs. In terms of similarities, both experimental and non-experimental research designs involve numeric data and statistics. However, in experimental research design, there is the involvement of manipulation of variables, while in non-experimental research, there is no manipulation of variables done. Also, in experimental research, intervention is present, while in non-experimental research, there is no intervention given. In conclusion, as researchers, it is important to become familiar with the different types of quantitative research designs, as this knowledge will help us to determine the best research design to use depending on our research objectives.